Hello and welcome back. Now, it's no secret that helmets have got weirder. Aero helmets more than anything. Although road helmets, are, road helmets are starting to go that way, which I think is a good thing. I worked very hard to gain all of the current, what I believe to be the weird helmets. I'm wrong now, aren't I? Because since I filmed this, old Rudy Project and, and Gyro, Giro, and Rudy Project somewhat overshadowed in more ways than one, overshadowed by the size of the gyro helmet and overshadowed in its launch date, have both released helmets that would, well, quite frankly, make what I'm about to test in this video look utterly ordinary. I mean, if it wasn't for the UCI then subsequently banning the sock that's been like widely used for the last 18 months and now it's deemed to be not okay, this would then be a, I, I would read title this time all of the regular looking aero helmets, which is best. So this isn't all of the funky looking aero helmets. This is all bar two of the funky looking aero helmets. Um, and I'm sorry about that. It means we are gonna have to go back. I mean, subject to whether the UCI, I, I feel like, and let's talk about this topic quickly before we delve into like this now slightly more boring version of what I was quite excited to share with you, test. This is gonna be an exciting, year ahead of, of it with both Gyro and Specialized battling with the UCI over these helmets that have been released and Rudy Project to an extent and I've got a feeling precedents are going to be set I've got a feeling there's going to be some big um, uproars comparisons to Formula 1 are often made I often make them right or wrongfully I often make them because I think Formula 1 um, they don't the FIA don't necessarily govern Formula 1 perfectly but I think they govern Formula 1 better than the UCI governs Cycling. Now the difference with Formula One, a set of rules is made and for each year and teams like they make a car abide into those rules. The difference here I think is the UCI set a vague set of rules and then when something is a bit wild the UCI then step in and go like oh no you don't you don't uh, contravene any rules but we just don't like it so we're going to ban it and an example of that would be the Bont Chrono shoe. Um, which was just deemed to be a piece of footwear that was more than fit for purpose, which is a bit of a vague, it's a bit of a vague one, isn't it? Um, like the shoe was just a little bit too pointy. And so the UCI of, of yeah, the Giro, the Gyro helmet is, it's kind of an extension of the Uno X helmet, which we'll get into, the Sweet Spot, Sweet Protection um, Redeemer. And you know, it's, it's longer, it's wider, it's, it's flatter. It actually does everything that I say in this video. I wish the Sweet Protection did more, which is, kind of gives me a little bit of, um, I was a bit content. I was like, ah, oh, I, I perhaps was along the right lines. If it's quick, I mean, Jumbo haven't, with the exception of Jonas Vingegaard, who we get into in here as well, because I think the helmet, looking at how it fits him, was made around him. Um, it looks like, yeah, I mean, it ticks all the boxes. And as for the specialized sock, I mean, I, sorry, coming back to the differences, the, that, the Aston Martin Formula One car is nothing like an Aston Martin for the road. The, the Red Bull Formula One car is nothing like a Red Bull energy drink. Those, it's not translatable. Whereas with the UCI rules, you require everything that's made to be sold to the public. So when a manufacturer makes a product, not only does it have to be like a, an item to try and win the Tour de France or whatever. It also has to be an item that they look at and can sell a lot of. So I think when something is then banned, the consequences for manufacturers are so much more dire than they are for other sports because of the uh, fact that they have to sell it to the mass market. So I think there's going to be some real interesting developments with this aero helmet thing. And maybe precedents are going to start to be set, um, which probably involve a box that a helmet has to fit into, which is probably going to rule out things like the pop temp or the maybe the, the sweet protection. Um, it's probably going to yeah to rule out the new Giro, maybe the Rudy project. I I don't know, but um, I think it's a shame because I like the way it was going with the innovation, and everyone laughed at the pock when it came out and Gustav Eric Larson. But since then, it's kind of been normalised. Um, and I feel like the sock with the Specialized was going that way as well. Um, either way, I think going forwards, if, if UCI do continue to uphold their ban of the sock, 
I'm going to outline how cold my ears get when I'm time trialling and put a balaclava on anyways. Anyway, back to this video of some of the funky helmets, which one is best? <laughs> and thought we'd pitch them all against each other. The helmets are as follows. The very old, now very old, but still good. Pop Tempor. I think it's important to know how these, how these helmets work. And this this Tempor has the fancy lining on the inside. These, these vents are not for ventilation. These vents are, as you can see on the inside, the padding allows no airflow to hit the head and it channels the airflow over the top and in these little slits here called a deltoid deflector, which is what they do, allegedly. It then exhausts that at quite a high pressure because obviously you've got much larger intake than exhaust over the shoulders aimed at making the helmet far more functional, which is the half the reason for the shape of it. Take them out and you have a fairly good shaped aero helmet with the tail. So that's helmet number one. Whilst we're on the subject of deltoid deflectors, helmet number two is the Sweet Spot Redeemer. Very new, very used by Uno X and not many other people so far. Uh, we've not seen it out in the wild much. It is not long been for sale. I mean, it's a very comfortable helmet. It really like, sits, like, it's just, it's a nice place to be inside. <sighs> Quite a radical shape, very radical shape. We've got this, this top cap, which I don't really understand. There's nothing on the inside which would denote why we would need this top cap. Maybe the ridges are trips of some sort, I don't know. But we do have a laminar flow bypass duct. That's what this is, it's written here. And it's written here with pre-preg carbon fiber outwash generator. Outwash, so similar to the pot, we have sizable vents here. None of it, no. This is built into the polystyrene rather than the padding. None of it hits the head whatsoever. All of it is channeled along here. And these tiny little slits to again, exhaust it over the shoulders with the aim to disrupt airflow there. To, to provide, again, a helmet that is more functional uh, than just the aerodynamics of the head. So that is the Sweet Spot Redeemer, both in the largest sizes they do. Next one, cask. Not a new helmet, not a radical helmet, but a radical visor. It's the fairing, this was very hard to get hold of. Ended up with two though. I borrowed one, this one, and then one that I had ordered that didn't turn up, did turn up. Seen these on Ganna and Josh Tarling. Again, not seen them on many other people. Certainly those with access to this, some are using it, some are not, which is perhaps a tell. I've got to say a larger, look at me with my vernier calipers looking like I know what I'm doing. There's a larger uh, fairing flap, gurney flap, whatever we want to call it, than I was anticipating. That is a full, nine or 10 millimeter flap. It tapers off as we get closer to the nose, but it is that width on both sides the whole way around. We also, I don't know why this has been done, but the visor at the top is smaller as well. So yeah, I'd love to know. And there is also, yeah, there is a bit more to this than meets the eye initially. We do have at the top of the flap, the visor is also stepped out a bit. That could easily be flush. I don't think this is unintentional either, this, this step out. I don't know why all of this isn't glass to provide an extra sort of level of vision upwards. But yeah, this, this step out here, I don't believe is unintentional. Uh, otherwise, this is a size large cask mistral, size large being the one a lot of people go for for the aerodynamics, even they, if they are tiny. The final helmet, unsurprisingly, is the Specialized TT5 with, complete with bank robbing, aero sock, balaclava. I have the faintest idea how this is supposed to work. I really don't. I, I, I'm just guessing. I'm not even guessing, I don't know. Witchcraft, wizardry. Harry Potter. Anyway, that was a long intro. Let's get to the results.
Right, what do we learn? Well, the, let's go straight into the results. So we've got a bit to get through. Specialized TT5, that was quickest. 1.4% back from the Specialized was the Pop Tempore. It's called the Tempore for Tempore Mental. I know I had this in a good position, so this was a fair test of this helmet. Out of position, it can, it can get very bad very quickly. It's designed for very good head position discipline. Next best, Cask Mistral uh, with flappy visor. This was 1.7% back from the Specialized. That's what it was. And last but not least, Sweet spot, sweet protection, sweet protection redeemer. What do those results mean? Well, in the real world, the specialized versus the sweet protection, two, let's call it 2%. In the National Time Trial Championships of Great Britain in 2022, one by Ethan Hayter. Took me 53 minutes, 27 seconds to get round. 26 mile course, pretty flat, fairly untechnical, closed roads, which is important, uh, so no, aero interference from cars be around a 20 second difference in time between the two helmets that would cost that would, i would require eight watts to overcome that difference or i'd need to lose six kilograms of of mass provided that that six kilograms does not change my shape at all um and you, your cask and your pock split the difference basically the first surprise for, to me is actually that these differences aren't bigger with such radical helmets i honestly thought we were going to see larger differences between good and bad. I don't think I need to talk about the POC because POC is, is a, it stood its test of time. I mentioned in the intro how, how it's supposed to work and I think it, did, it does exactly that. I will, the only thing I will say is that the helmet works better on narrow people than it does wide people. I consider myself a wide person. I've got quite wide shoulders. A narrow person would be someone like Ethan Vernon who is, you know, very, Long, slender, don't know the best way of putting it. Ilnia Zakarin, the Russian rider from old, is, is very narrow, a narrow rider. I think that's, that helmet works better on those than it does wider guys. Let's talk about the sweet protection. I think, now if we look at these videos of it on the bike, I think the gap, I would like to see this helmet be longer. And it's a shame because I think it, it, it's, it's an engineering masterpiece, I love, the thinking that's gone into it. I think the gap between the end of the helmet and my body was just too big for this, the the, the laminar flow bypass duct pre-preg carbon fiber outwash generator. I think the gap between the pre-preg carbon fiber outwash generator and my shoulders was just a bit too big. If I'm trying to visualize airflow, thinking perhaps more airflow is coming round the and stopping it doing it what it's what it designed to do across the top of the shoulders so i would like to see this be longer the second surprise of the testing results was that the biggest differences i thought would be a high yaw mainly because the pock and the sweep protection they just look and feel like they're designed to work in a straight line not with wind coming from the side, but the differences were actually smallest between all the helmets, all of them, including the Cask Mistral, at your. I've really thought these things would be closer to the Specialized straight on, but they were not. That is when they were furthest away. This was 2.7% slower than the Specialized in a straight line, and just you know, it was 1.8% slower at seven degrees. Did I get that right? Yes, I got that right. And the same thing happened to the POC and the cask. Everything was better at high yaw or at yaw. So that was, that was the second surprise. We're going on to the cask and kind of the specialized as well, really. But we'll start with the cask. I, I don't know how this works. I'm going to go away. I'm going to ask some people smarter than I am how this, what this is supposed to be doing, why this flap is here. Because I... I I don't know, and I wouldn't be confident in guessing it. So I'm gonna go away and just ask people smarter than I am the reason for it. And then we do do a test. There is a test of this with and without the visor. So I'm gonna go find that out before that test. And lastly, kind of similarly, what kind of Wingardium Leviosa stuff's going on with this helmet? Cause I just look at it and I don't know why it works. And I want to. So I'm, I wanna know why we've got 
these little fins. Wanna know why the visor is set so far away from the face? Wanna know why the sock works? And I wanna know why we have this cut out here and why we have such a flat panel and such a pronounced edge here because I just don't get it, but clearly it works. And it, you know, it's not just working on me as they're becoming more available to the public, people are testing them and they are working across the board. And I don't know why, and I would like to. So thanks for watching. And um, yeah, I hope you find, found that informative. I guess I probably should have done a test just on simply how they look. Stood here, sat here in front of you. Like that would have been Let's do it quickly. Right. Cask with the visor. Pretty inoffensive. We'll give that a like a eight out of ten for appearance. Pock temple. Not good. Not good at all, I don't think. Maybe a, th a three out of ten. But a four just because of its its legacy. I reckon when it first came out. Oh, that's not painful. When it first came out, I reckon it sat at a good like one or zero out of 10, but over time, as it's got more reputable, it's also got better looking at the same time. So go on four, let's give it a four out of 10. Cask is winning with an eight out of 10, that's a four. Um, the sweet protection, not holding out hope for the fashion police here. It is a lovely place to be inside, lovely place to sit in your endo. Um, nice, nice room. Yeah, here we go, see. Yeah. What are we saying? Five. Might be generous. And last but not least. <laughs> I mean, you're not getting to a start line in a hurry, that's for sure. I think triathletes are going to have a real decision on their hands with the sock. It's a transition. But you can, you can model it if it's worth the time spent putting the uh, sock on in transition versus what you will lose, what you will gain or lose out on the bike. Unfortunately, this doesn't fit me as beautifully as it fits Remco. I'm one of these guys where it kind of goes on the chin. So we're giving this a, a one out of 10 and just thank God there's a mirrored visor. Thanks for watching.